Hello everyone, so in this video, let us talk about a problem from lead code. The problem name is find all duplicates in an array. So the problem statement goes like this, that you are given an integer array nums of length n, where all the integers of nums are between the range from 1 till n. And each integer appears only once or twice in that array. Now you have to return all the numbers that are appearing twice in that array. But the condition is that you have to run this whole algorithm that you will write down in O of n time complexity as well as you don't have to use any extra space. That's your problem. Now, can you think of just ignoring the last line? Can you first think of all the approach in which you can solve this problem out? If you want to do this in, let's say, not in O of n, but you have, let's say, more time or maybe more space, then how you can do that? First, talking about more space, if you have more space, what you can do, you can just directly make a map in which you can store the occurrence of every number and whatever number occurs more than twice you can just make another vector of it or another container of it and then you're good to go when you have like you have more than o of n time then you can directly sort out the numbers when you have sort out either the numbers that are twice or one time will be all in a single particular row now what you can do is that you can directly check every number with its next number or previous number that if they are same then it is occurring twice, then you can make another vector out of it and just check that uh, it is occurring twice. So both of the scenarios, you can either like compromise with the time or compromise with the space. But here you don't have like you don't have to compromise with anything. You, like you have to make the problem run in O of N as well as don't use any time. Now extra space, sorry. So how you can solve out this such type problems? In this problem, what you can say is that there is always some hint that is given to you. Then only you can solve such a problem because if the constraints are same, then very difficult for that so the constraint here is that all the numbers will be in the range from 1 till n which means that let's say that there are 10 numbers so all numbers which are given to you in the array will be between the range of 1 till 10 only now that's the one of the constraints that or like one of the helpful thing that you can directly use so what you can do is let's take one example that is this example only 4 3 2 7 4 3 2 7 and the next number is 8231. 8231. Let us also give these number the indexes so that it will become more clear to us. So let us like divide these numbers out into different blocks. So this is the zero index number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So what you can actually see is that because there are seven indexes, the total numbers that we have are 8. So the numbers will be in this category will be from 1 till 8 only because n is 8 here because there are 8 numbers so all numbers will be in the range from 1 till 8 fine now what's the best part here is that because all the numbers are between 1 to n like 1 to 8 you can see here i have to just check that what all numbers are occurring more than once or like occurring twice so what you can directly observe from this example is that i have to somehow mark the number so in O of n, it generally means that you have to just do one single traversal from left to right. So we have to just do one more tra one traversal. But in every traversal, like at every instance, you have to just check that whether this number is already occurred before or not. Now how I can check that out? So what you can directly do is that for every number, I can mark in this, this similar array that whether I have seen this number or not using the indexes. Because the indexes and the number are in the same range. Uh, what I'll try to explain is, let's take one more pen. What you can directly see is that if I have seen four, okay, then what you can directly see is let because it is zero indexing. Let us now convert it to one indexing. Let's assume that it is one indexing. Okay, we will try to compromise that also. But let's say that this is one indexing now. It is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So which means that which actually means that every number. Like every index is now is in the range of 1 till n only. So every number will be between this range only. Now if I have seen 4, what you can directly go is that go to the 4th index number and switch its sign. Because every number will be positive. It is given the constraint. So every number will be positive. What you can directly do is that you can switch the sign of that number. Now I will make this number minus 7. Does this make any problem? No. Why? Because the number position doesn't change out. All the numbers are positive. So I can only make that negative. Okay, now what you'll do is that by marking this as negative, what you are actually storing the information is that the fourth number I have already seen. 
Okay. Now let us go to the next number that is 3. What I'll next do is that go to the third index and mark it again as negative. So I'm just reversing the sign of the numbers that I've already seen. So I'll go to the index of that number, reverse that, reverse that sign. Let's go to 2. Now this is not stored as 2, it is stored at minus 2. So what you're, what you're supposed to do is that for every number, because you're changing the signs of these numbers, you have to take the absolute value because initially they all are positive. So we only have to think about the positive numbers. The sign we are putting is by our own choice. The numbers are all positive. Got it? So whatever number we have, you have to first convert it to the absolute value, which is 2 only, so which means that we'll go to the second index. So like, so this is here. So I'll just mark this as negative as well. Now this is 7. So I'll go to 7 position, mark it as negative, then go to 8. So 8 position mark it as negative. Then I'll go to 2. Now what you'll see is that when I go to 2 and start marking it as negative, it is already negative. What it actually tells us, which tells us that it is already negative, which means that I have, I have somehow traversed this 2 or seen this 2 earlier. That is why I have marked it as negative because all the numbers are positive. Only the numbers that are marked as negative are already seen. So if it is already negative, which means that it is already seen. So it is occurring twice. So you can take this number that is 2 and put in some vector that I have seen this number twice. So it is occurring as twice. Go to the next number that is 3. So don't take it as minus 3. It is as 3. So when you go to the third index that is here, see that, okay, this is already also negative. So take this as number as well that it is already seen as well. Go to 1. So 1 index is not negative, put it as negative. And now you have the answer that is 2 and 3 are acting twice. So in this whole scenario, we have not used any extra shares because we are only flipping out the signs of the numbers in our old, like original array. Uh, if you want to just make it very original, you can just do one more for loop and just make everything positive. Okay, it's not required, but you can also do that if you don't want to alter the array altogether. The next thing is that we are have done in this O of n only because you have traversal the whole array only once. And that's the beauty of this algorithm and like this whole approach. So that is how you can solve your system problems. Now, the cool part because this is zeroth indexing, what you can actually do is like to shift every number by one. So let's say that this is four. What it actually means that I have to mark the fourth number as negative. Okay. So instead of marking the fourth number because it is a zero, like this is zero indexing, actually it is zero indexing. Take the number and subtract one from it. Because if I subtract one from it, it becomes zero indexing. Because by fourth number is actually the third index number. So if I want to mark the fourth number as negative, you can do as a third index as negative. So whatever number you have, just subtract one from it so that we can directly map it to zero indexing only instead of like marking it as one indexing because then it might get a little confusing. But yeah, that's it. So that we don't use any extra space. That's all our logic here. So with, this is the answer vector that will store the final answer. This is the length of the nums array. Now what you'll do is that you'll iterate over every num, uh, like every nums uh, number. Then what you'll do is that you have to first convert it into positive because we only talk about or only consider about the positive parts of this whole array okay negative we do with negative we do there is no negative as okay then what you'll do if the number is already negative which means that it is already present we have already iterated over when we are going through the whole array so it is a duplicate so we will push the positive number so this is the positive number so i will push this val this is the positive number of the numbers that i'm on we will push that in the answer vector that we have already seen this number this is a, a duplicate number stored somewhere else Else, if it is not a negative number, I will convert that number to negative. So I'll just multiply that number with minus one. So whatever number I have, that is this well. Okay, we have to talk about the positive number. Subtract one from it so that I will get the end, uh, uh, what you can zero indexing value. From that value, go in nums, the same nums. So take this number, which is coming from nums only, subtract one from it, go in the same array that is nums, and multiply it with minus one. So so that it has like switched the signs of that. In the end, we have the vector that has all the duplicates value. So this is the real logic and the code part for this problem. You've understood that we have used an O of N time of city uh, algorithm as well as there is no extra space that is used. So that's the real logic and the code part for this problem. Stay tuned for more videos on this channel. Thank you for watching this video till the end. I will see you in the next one. Till I keep coding and bye.